Hey race fans and welcome back to the channel. My name is Simon and in today's video we'll be looking at how to get trading paints up and running on iRacing. This video is part of a broader series on the channel looking at how to optimize your iRacing experience so check back regularly for more setup guides. Okay, let's get into it. So what is trading paints? It's a third party application that runs on your PC in support of iRacing and it allows you to create custom paints for any of the cars that you own on the service. And whilst you're out on track and you have trading paints running, you'll also be able to see other users custom car paints that are also running the trading paints application. You can customize car paints for almost every car on iRacing. A couple do have copyright protection. And you can also change your race helmet, race suits, and what your pit crew is wearing away from the default iRacing settings and into a customizable graphic. It's possible to create specific paints when you're running in a particular league or when you're running at night, or even when you run as part of a team. So it's well worth a look if you haven't already. So once you've headed to tradingpaints.com and you've done the initial account setup, you'll need to think about whether you want to go with the pro version or if you want to go with the basic version. Now with the pro version, you get a couple of extras. One is you can paint from your browser with Paint Builder. So if you're just starting to dip your toes into creating your own paints, this is a very easy to use tool and a simple way to get into the paint building process. You can use custom number styles for your cars. You can access decal layers, which can be useful for leagues or special events. You can run nighttime paints for any of your cars. And then there's a few other highlights at the bottom. It will save your old paints. There's additional tools and flexibility for designers. And then the one that I really like is you can have a special suit and helmet for every car, rather than just having the same suit and helmet when you get into any car on the service. So some interesting things to consider if you're thinking about the pro version. Once you're happy with your account setup, the next thing you need to do is to download the Trading Paints installer. If you click on your profile photo and click Install Downloader, this is where you'll find it. The current release is the one in the blue box, Download Trading Paints, but there's also a downloader beta if for any reason you're having issues with the main Trading Paints application. This is a useful alternative, which I've used from time to time if I'm having issues with getting the main one working on a particular session. So I already have this downloaded, so I'm gonna open it up for us so you can see what it looks like. It's a very simple app, which is great. Not too many configurable options, but if we look here, these are the things that you can configure. So you can have trading paints on system startup. I don't like to do that. I do like it to automatically refresh paint so that I don't have to prompt the program to do it for me. And then there are other options such as cleaning up the downloaded files when I exit iRacing. This can be very useful because if you're running large races with lots of cars, running lots of custom paint, these files will take up storage space over time and rather than going in and manually deleting them you can leave this tick to on and trading paints every time you close it should go into that paint folder and clean up the old files so it doesn't add additional storage overhead to your install clean up drivers existing paint files before fetching new paint so if someone has replaced their paint with an updated version it will delete the old version and just keep their new version update my own paints i always keep this on so that whatever paints i have selected on the website stay current on my pc show output from activity think of that as a data log of the activities and changes that trading paints is doing when it's running useful if you're having issues but generally i keep that switched off and then finally keep my paints sync from website i have this switched on so that if i make any changes to the paints that i'm running on trading paints online it will update the paints accordingly in my iRacing install folder Before we head back to the Trading Paints website and explore a little further there, let's take a look at where Trading Paints stores the paint files on your PC. So you want to head to your iRacing folder. You want to head into Paint. 
Now here you'll see folders for every car that's listed on the sim, whether you own it or not. Let's head down to the Mercedes Evo GT3, as it's a car I'm running quite frequently at the moment. And you'll see the two paint files here. The first one, the TGA file, is the paint file that contains all of the graphics for the car. And then this MIP file is called a spec map, and that is a decal layer that has been added on top of the car as well. Now, the reason it's useful to keep an eye on this paint folder is most of the time, Training Paints does a great job of cleaning up this folder and getting rid of unused paints. But I have noticed from time to time, it will miss a cleanup and this folder size can grow and can pose a bit of a problem if you don't keep an eye on it. So it's always worth doing a right click on paint, hitting properties, and then just taking a look to see what the size is on the disc here. For me, it's 167 megabytes, so that's fine. That'll just be for the paints that I'm running. But if that's ever creeping into the one gigabyte or above, it's telling you that Trading Paints isn't cleaning up after itself. And so you might wanna manually go into there and just start deleting those TGA files just so that you can refresh it. And then the next time Trading Paints runs, it'll pull down all your necessary paints on the fly. When you log on to Trading Paints, once you've got an account set up, this will be the first screen that you see, and it's going to show you the paints that you're currently racing on the service. But let's take a look at the showroom so I can walk you through that first. This is the part of the website where you can see all of the paints that have been uploaded by members of Trading Paints. You can select different filters so you can get to the specific car or the specific type of paint that you're looking for. Let's take a look through this. Maybe we want to see the most favorited paints on the system, so we will click that. You most likely have a particular vehicle in mind that you're looking to find a paint for. So in this example, let's take a look at the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo. And then a couple of other filters. You can filter just from people you know on the service or from everyone, we'll leave it to everyone. And then here you can filter on whether it's available to race in iRacing currently, whether there's a SIM stamp number or whether there's a custom number included in the paint pack. Now, once we've had a look through this, perhaps we like this Alitalia Ferrari. So we'll take a click on that. You'll typically then get some nice high resolution photos of what the paint looks like, which is awesome. And then there's a couple of options. You can hit favorite, so then it's easier to find later. You can immediately hit race this paint and it will apply this paint into this particular car. So the next time you fire up iRacing with trading paints, this will load. Or you can simply add it to a collection so you can save it and you can easily find it later on. So let's head back to the My Paints section. So we head to the top here, My Paints, and then what I'm racing. And so all of the iRacing cars are in this list on the left-hand side. So you can scroll up, scroll down, no problem at all. If you've already added a custom paint to a car, you will see this icon listed next to it. So let's take a look at my Audi R8 LMS. So as you can see, already running a custom paint here, but let's say I wanted to change that paint. I would click on paint options, choose new paint. And then there's a number of ways you can do this. You can upload a paint if you already have one ready to go from your PC. You can find a paint and this will take you straight into the showroom so you can select a paint as we looked at before. Maybe you've got a list that you have favorited from the showroom. This will take you to that list. And then if you want to reactivate an old paint, this will show you the last six paints that you've selected so long as you're running the pro version of Trading Paints. If you want to jump in and start painting your own, couple of options here. You can grab a painting template, so you can use Photoshop or GIMP to create a paint file, or you can use Training Paint's own paint builder with the pro version. So if we head back, a few other things to be aware of here. If you have the pro version, you can set custom liveries for night races. You can add extra decal layers and you can specify the driver suit and helmet to wear when you're running this particular car. 
You can see from my leagues and series, I can also specify specific paints in this list too. So I've got my West Coast Racing paint, I've got my IMSA iRacing series paint, and then for my teams at the bottom, some of these I don't manage, but you can see there are individual paint files listed for each one of them. So lots of ways to customize paint options per car. Something to be aware of is that helmets and suits are just listed in the same list as the cars and they can be quite easy to miss. So let's just take a quick look at the helmets. And just like with the cars, if you wanted to change or update the paint, you would just hit paint options, choose new paint, and then you can upload a paint if you have one saved to your PC already. You can find a paint, this will take you to the showroom. You can click your favorites, so maybe you have a number of favorites that you want to pull from. Uh, you can take a look at some of your old paints that you have previously run, and then you can actually jump straight into the paint builder if you want to start painting your own. So super easy to do. And then if we head down to suits, exactly the same idea. Again, easy to miss in this long list of cars. With the same idea this will basically be your default suit that you wear into every car unless that particular car has a specific suit called out that you want to wear when you're running that car in a particular race with the same idea you'd hit paint options choose new paint and all of the same options are there below So I've loaded us into the sim, and this is actually a replay from last night's S1 Racing League. And I'm just gonna play this through so you can have a look at the quality of the paints that you get. And also just to show you that everyone here in this race is using trading paints and it looks fantastic. Now I'm gonna pause it here and let's say you were in a race session and you were seeing either lots of white cars or lots of default looking paint and it just doesn't appear that trading paint is working correctly. There's a good keyboard shortcut to bear in mind and it's control R, pretty simple, and that will just refresh the paint. So it'll make everything go white for maybe a minute or so, but then it will fetch the new paints and put them on the cars. I don't feel like I'm having to do this very often, but it is a useful tool just in case you need it. So there you go, I hit Control R, it takes all the paints away, and then you do have to wait for a couple of minutes, but you'll start to see them come back into view as it's hunting the paints out on the Trading Paints website and then pulling them back into your session. That's all for this one. Trading Paints is a pretty straightforward program once you have it up and running, but it's a fantastic addition to add realism into your iRacing experience. Check back on the channel for more setup guides and if there's one that you don't see and you'd like us to put together, just let us know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the grid.